Greetings and salutations, friends, and welcome back to some more Warhammer 40k lore. Today, we are going to be looking at one very special little Imperial Guard regiment. One of my favourites when it comes to pure visual style. The Maccabian Janny series. I mean, just, just fucking look at that. That is just... Mwah. Beautiful. I love their entire aesthetics. The dull grey colourings, the silver death masks, their huge, almost bolt gun looking M36 pattern las guns. They are just gorgeous. They look every bit the crazy religious zealots that they are. So, let's have a look at their backstory, shall we? First and foremost, as mentioned, they are a very very religious regiment. In fact, they're almost to the point of being one of the old Frateris militia regiments of old. They are zealous and almost fearless warriors, to the point where one of their anti-tank doctrines includes taking a random janissary, giving him two multi bombs, and asking him to do his best Speedy Gonzales impression in the direction of the enemy's armoured vehicles. As you can probably imagine, the survival rate amongst these volunteers is roughly that of a snow cone that has been shoved up Satan's anus during the hottest season in hell. But if you do, by some miraculous reason, survive, you do get a special promotion. And, well, technically speaking, you get the special promotion even if you don't live, and, uh, well, it saves a lot on extra officers' pay, if nothing else. Although, it should also be mentioned that comparing the Janissaries to a standard Imperial Guard regiment wouldn't be entirely correct. They are organised as such, and in all due technicality they are a standard Imperial Guard regiment, albeit an elite one that usually gets better supplies than most others, but they do have one vital difference. Most Imperial Guard regiments are levied directly from planet's PDFs, or local militias. The Janissaries are also levied from what is technically the local militia, but with a slight twist. So, let's look at their backstory, their planet of origin, shall we? And the reason why they wear those ever-so-stylish death masks. And they, of course, bear the resemblance of a famous imperial saint, namely Saint Drusus. Saint Drusus started his career as a saint, I suppose you could call it, as an imperial commander taking part in the Angevin Crusade. Before his elevation, he was in command of the Trailwood Salient of the Crusade, pushing into the Halo Stars. The goal of the Crusade was to establish a stable dominion in what was a rather uncomfortable area of space, filled with warp storms and, of course, all of the wonderful little chaos-worshipping monkeys that follow chaos storms like ducklings following a mother goose. Unfortunately for Drusus, he quickly found himself outmaneuvered by the forces of chaos. They undoubtedly used some form of vile sorcery to simply pop right behind his lines and into his rear, wrecking havoc upon his lines of supply and also his rearguard forces. In an attempt to regain control over the situation, Drusus ordered that all of his forces be rallied on a single planet. The planet, later to be known as Macabus Quintus, was at that point uncolonized and devoid of life. It had a basic atmosphere and could sustain human life, although it was a remarkably harsh place, even in the harshness of the galaxy. On this planet, he was again ambushed, some vile sorcery, once again no doubt, and the forces of chaos discovered his location, his precise location, and as the forces of chaos are wont to do with such information, they sent a giant fuck-off demon to go help him pray. It is a little known fact that nothing is quite as effective as a spiky monstrosity to get one closer to the Emperor, in a very, very physical and spiritual sense. 
And while Demon vs. Lone Imperial Commander is an unfair fight at the best of times, and Drusus was no exception to this particular statistic of murder, he did have a little bit of an ace up his sleeve. Apparently, Drusus had been a very, very good boy in his life, and so when the spiked monstrosity tore his head from his spine, the Emperor decided that he couldn't simply just let him die like this, and resurrected him in the form of a living saint, the mere presence of which was more than enough to banish the demonic assassin. The newborn saint quickly resumed command over his forces, and from that point onwards he was said to know no defeat, and managed to establish a stable domain that would come to be known as the Calyx Sector. The planet upon which the living saint had been born was turned into a shrine world in honour of his memory, and dubbed Macabus Quintus. The Maccabian Janissaries were formed to carry his likeness out further into the galaxy and continue the good work that he had begun, and of course also to keep what he had managed to wrest from the diabolical forces of the Great Enemy. Now granted, I will say that I find the whole wearing of a dead man's face ever so slightly macabre, but then again, this is 40k and the Imperium to boot, so it is only fitting in all due reality. So, why did I say that they're quite different from normal Imperial Guard regiments? Well, as you can probably already tell, there are rather obvious religious undertones in this particular regiment, and they are recruited in a rather unique way. In most cases, planets have either militias or PDFs or some other named organization to provide defense for the planet itself. It is from this pool of manpower that units for the Imperial Guard are usually recruited amongst the cream of the crop, in most cases with a few noteworthy exceptions. With the Maccabian Janissaries, however, they do not recruit primarily from the planet's population itself. In fact, the Maccabian Militia, which is the PDF of the planet, is created almost entirely from the hundreds of thousands, if not millions of pilgrims that flock to the planet every single year. And it is these uh, zealous travellers that make up the majority of the Maccabian militia. There does not appear to be any kind of restrictions on locals joining the militia as well, so I'm sure there are quite a few locals in addition to the pilgrims, but the pilgrims are, well, just flat out more numerous. As I mentioned earlier, the planet Macabre Squintus is a pretty shitty place to live. It is a cold, dark and desolate place where the only signs of civilization are towering temple cities, and rays of sunlight are rare indeed. It is not exactly a planet that would normally speaking be inviting life. In fact, in most cases the planet would probably not even be settled to begin with since it has very little in the way of raw resources and it most certainly can't be turned into an agri-world. It is only its position as a shrine world that really means that it has any kind of population whatsoever. So the population that exists on the planet is almost certainly entirely dedicated to servicing the pilgrims. And no, not in that way, or, well, quite possibly in exactly that way. But my point is, the vast majority of the population are almost certainly focused on providing the pilgrims with various accommodations and services. You know, hotels, food, bakeries, and of course, guided tours to the various cathedrals, stuff like that. It will in all due probability be getting pretty much all of its produce from outside the planet. Undoubtedly there are some produce being created on the planet, agricultural good and stuff like that grown in greenhouses and specialized crop plantations, but it's going to be dwarfed by the sheer amount necessary to feed both the population of course, and the millions upon millions of pilgrims and tourists. As such, the planet is probably going to be ruinously expensive, where you have the upper strata of the planet's high-born, so to say, owning massive hotels and probably even having a fair bit of a stake in the ecclesiarchy itself. In fact, a good deal of said hotels are probably run directly by the ecclesiarchy and of course the Adeptus Ministorum, while other things, luxuries like, you know, cakes and stuff that would have to be created with agricultural means would be incredibly expensive. In all due likelihood, the local population will subside off pretty much alms and charities given to them by the church. 
by the Imperial Creed, as they are unlikely to be able to grow much by themselves, and they will almost certainly not be able to afford anything that's been shipped in en masse. I mean, think of this. If you have to ship grain from another goddamn planet, you can imagine what that'll do to the price of grain, can't you? In other words, being a local of Macabre's Quintus is probably really, really, really shit. The food is going to be horrible, you're pretty much doomed to never-ending poverty, and the only people in your lives that have anything even resembling wealth or even just a decent living standards would almost certainly be the Ecclesiarchy. As such, you can imagine that people will start getting really, really religious really, really quickly. It's remarkably just how religious a man can get if you offer him a sausage when he's eaten nothing but porridge throughout his entire life. What I'm trying to say is I would not be surprised if joining the Janissaries, or at the very least just joining the Militia, would increase the standard of living by quite a lot. And considering that the religion of the world is very, very martial, seeing as the patron saint of the planet is obviously Drusus, an Imperial military commander, joining the militia almost certainly comes with a fair few perks and also, of course, social status. And here's the real kicker. The Maccabian Janissaries recruit from the militia itself, which means that the Janissaries are made up almost entirely of pilgrims, with undoubtedly a few locals here and there, predominantly probably ecclesiarchy personnel that are rising in the ranks, seeing as, again, the best way to gain social standing on this particular planet will almost certainly be within the church. And as such, the best way to translate said standing into perhaps a military position like an officer would be to have a previous position within the church, or potentially vice versa, as both are extremely religious organisations. Anyways, the Maccabian Janissaries recruit only the best of the best in the militia, and getting recruited into the Maccabian Janissaries is seen as a great honour. And indeed, even more so, because it is a religious calling for life. It is a great duty. It is a mission from the God Emperor himself, practically. This translates into the simple fact that Maccabian Janissaries will never return to their homeworlds. Ever. In the case of normal Imperial Guard regiments, they will probably never return home, but should the regiment commit some great deed, or be reduced to the point where they are no longer considered combat effective, the regiment may be disbanded, and thereby given a plot of land on a planet nearby, either the planet that they did something awesome to win, or simply a nearby rock in the case of a regiment being disbanded. However, the Janissaries will almost never accept this. Even when they have been reduced to the point of complete and utter combat uselessness, they will even demand to be transferred into new regiments of Janissaries, or they will simply ask to be thrown at the enemy head first. If neither of those are a possibility, they will often take their kit and wander the galaxy, protecting pilgrims and carrying out other religious works, like for example lending their lasguns to various other religious causes that are in need of the persuasive effect that only a nice big fat rifle could provide. And so, knowing all that, I think it's going to come as no great surprise when I tell you that the Janissaries are rather fanatical. And when I say fanatical, I mean the kind of fanatical that will see them line up in ordered ranks and wander straight into machine gun fire with nary a complaint uttered. But to be fair, if any regiment is going to be doing something so suicidally silly, the Maccabian Janissaries will probably be the best choice, as they, though few in numbers, are equipped far better than most Imperial Guard regiments. Let's go over their equipment list real quick, shall we? So, right off the bat, they've got the M36 Patton Lasgun, rather than the more common M35. The 36 is a bit bulkier, as you can see, and it's got a bit larger power pack, giving it a slightly bigger oomph than the standard M35 Galaxy Patton. Other than that, it's a relatively unremarkable weapon. 
The average soldier carries with him four lasgun charges and anything he can steal, a Macabian Janissaries guard uniform, which is coloured in the light blues and silver of their home world, reminiscent of the great salt flats that cover the planet, and of course the death mask of Saint Drusus. Furthermore, they carry a combat knife, two fragmentation grenades, two crack grenades, poor weather gear, a rucksack, basic toolkit, mess and water canteens, blankets, sleeping bags, rechargeable lamp packs, grooming kits, dog tags, the Imperial Infantryman's uplifting ass wipe, two weeks of rations, respirator, purity seals, obviously, because, well, Duh. And they've also got photo visors worked into their death masks, which gives them a considerable advantage over most regiments in low light conditions. And finally, they carry Mark I flak armor. This is considerably tougher than the general wet tissue paper flak armor of most Imperial Guard regiments, and will offer roughly the same protection as Imperial Guard Stormtrooper carapace armor, meaning that the Maccabian Janissaries are considerably tougher than standard Imperial Guard regiments. Additionally, it should be mentioned that their entire religion, their entire faith, based around Saint Drusus, is one of endurance and badassery. As such, they are capable of near space marine levels of sheer not giving a fuck. A Maccabian Janissary that has his legs blown off is expected to simply crawl towards the enemy and hopefully stab them to death with a broken knife if need be. And it's a good thing, too, that they're so goddamn stubborn, because their battle tactics are somewhat, um... archaic, should we perhaps say. The Maccabian Janissaries are trained to form into line formations, if need be, and march shoulder to shoulder up to the enemy, delivering volley after volley of well-organized and disciplined lasgun fire. Now, don't get me wrong, they are trained in more modern ways of combat as well, but they see a certain glory in this shoulder-to-shoulder -shoulder way of battle, a certain purity. And we all know how zealots tend to act when purity is in the picture. In all you essentiality, the Maccabian Janissary suffers from many of the same flaws that most overly religious units do. One, they are often somewhat complicated to command, since they will often figure that they know best, because, well, they are literally talking to God, and you wouldn't want to disagree with God, now would you? Second, they have a nasty habit of biting off more than they can chew, because, again, they're blessed by God, and God wouldn't lead them astray, etc. And thirdly, they have a nasty habit of blaming others, because after all, they were told, by God, again, to attack said position. And they were also told that God would protect them. And yet, they did not manage to take said position, and they suffered heavy casualties. And since God, obviously, is infallible and can never be blamed for anything because, well, God, that has to mean that somebody else failed them, but it can't possibly be themselves, because they are, after all, very, very pure and ever so religious. No, it's gonna have to be somebody else's fault. And this often results in the more zealous elements of the Imperial Army falling upon the less zealous elements. For example, there are accounts of Maccabian Janissaries serving alongside other regiments, and in times of difficulty and adversity, they would often form near-inquisitorial groupings that would go into the other regiments and scour them for heretics and other such nonsense. And you know... There is a queer coincidence with all of this. Generally speaking, when people go on witch hunts, they tend to find witches. Now, whether or not that is simply because there's a lot of witches in the world, or because it is surprisingly easy to find flaws when you are specifically looking for flaws, well, I'll leave that up to your imagination. And as you can probably further imagine, the other regiments did not take particularly kindly to mobs of Janissaries breaking into their camps, beating the shit out of their people, and occasionally dragging some of them off to serve as extra bonfire fuel. 
And while strife between Imperial Guard regiments is absolutely nothing new, and bouts of violence and occasionally even homicides is nothing particularly rare, generally speaking, the various officers and commissars attached to the regiments will be doing everything they can to stop it. A little bit of interregimental competition is all well and good, the occasional robbing or beating is also something that's simply just part of life, but organised murders. Well, that generally cannot be allowed to continue, cause uh, it has a nasty habit of escalating rather quickly. But of course, within the Maccabi and Janish series, it wasn't just the rank and file who had a nasty tendency to hear the god emperor whispering to them something along the lines of, hey, that dude over there is a heretic. The officers as well had a nasty case of personal conversation with the Golden One. And so, far from discouraging these random acts of violence, they would frequently be encouraging them, if not even just flat out organising them. And since now the other Imperial Guard regiments would have no choice but to defend themselves, since they're in all due essentiality getting outright attacked by their own allies, well, let's just say that the bloodshed will quickly cease being an intermittent and occasional affair, and grow into a far more permanent sort of firefight. There is, however, also a bit of a flip side to this particular coin. You see, just because you're paranoid doesn't mean that somebody isn't out to get you, and the Maccabi and Janissaries most definitively have enemies within the Imperium. Again, this is a highly religious Imperial Guard regiment that has very very strong ties to the Adeptus Ministorum and the Ecclesiarchy as a whole. Now, as we have talked about earlier in the Sisters of Battle videos, the Ecclesiarchy is not allowed to have any men under arms, which is why they have the Sisters of Battle, because, well, they do not have winkies, and as such they are allowed to carry heavy automatic weaponry. But the Maccabi and Janissaries are, in all but name, the Frateris Militia come again. After all, they are a fully trained, fully disciplined, and fully equipped Imperial Army unit, with heavy support, tanks, heavy weapons, artillery, and everything else they could possibly need to be a fully sized and effective fighting force, with a strong discipline and a nice solid supply line. And they are, in all due essentiality, loyal to the Ecclesiarchy, since, after all, they are a military order specifically devoted to an Imperial Saint. All I'm saying is, if you've got an Imperial Commander on one hand saying, shoot the priest, and you've got an Ecclesiarchy Preacher on the other hand saying, shoot the officer, the Janissary is more than likely to put a lasball through the ever so twinkly eyes of the dude in green rather than the guy in sackcloth. And this has undoubtedly earned them quite a lot of enemies within the Adeptus Administratum, that see the Maccabian Janissaries as a rather dangerous force, but at the same time, they are also a very potent fighting force within a less than stable part of the galaxy. As such, they cannot afford to move against them openly. But you can make damn sure that any and every occasion upon which the Maccabian Janissaries would appear to misbehave, or perhaps take their zealotry just a little bit too far, is going to be very, very carefully recorded by their enemies for use when the sector is a little bit more quiet, and the Imperium will have some leisure time to take care of internal problems, shall we say. And, well, I wouldn't put it beyond the Adeptus Administratum to orchestrate one or two events just to lend a little bit of extra um, credence to a case they already know to be righteous. But of course, it is not all doom and gloom. The political situation of the Maccabi and Janissaries, mixed with their rather fascinating ideas of worship, does end up having some small tinsy wincy problems, and is probably going to lead to a fair bit of infighting in and of itself. However, it cannot be denied that the Janissaries themselves are a very potent fighting force. They are very well equipped, heavily armoured for an Imperial Guard regiment, 
packing a fair bit of heavy weapons of their own, and they will happily assault even the most heavily defended position, regardless of the casualties that they are likely to take in doing so. And most wise Imperial commanders will certainly find a way of utilising this particular trait. It is in all due essentiality a simple question of every problem has its tool. In the case of the Maccabi and Janissaries, they are very much so defensive garrison troops. If you order them to attack a position across the open, they will do so, and due to their zealotry and resilience, they're quite likely to carry the objective as well, but they are going to emerge bloodied, if not crippled, from the engagement, as they will often be marching shoulder to shoulder across open ground into screaming machine gun fire. And that's if they're lucky. There are things in the 41st millennium that would be considerably more uncomfortable than a machine gun. However, that very same zealotry will serve them very, very well indeed on the defensive. Place the Maccabian Janissaries in a nice fortified position behind some plasteel bulwarks, for example, and you will have units that simply cannot be suppressed, no matter how many heads pop like overripe melons from automated machine gun fire, most of their bodies will still be covered, and in the meantime, they are able to deliver disciplined volleys of devastating Laz gun fire, scorching into the enemy, making any assault upon such a precision a damn bloody proposition indeed. And additionally, due to their zealotry, they are extremely unlikely to abandon their defensive positions, even if they are getting charged by a screaming horde of orcs. The Janissaries will either repulse them with disciplined volleys of lasgun fire or gleaming rank upon rank of bayonets, or they will fucking die trying. They would also likely make excellent garrison troops for low technology worlds, or worlds that simply have a different view of the Emperor. As we've talked about on several occasions, many worlds have slightly different interpretations of the worship of the God Emperor. Placing the Maccabi and Janissaries on a somewhat feral world, a feudal world for example, where they see the Emperor as more of a symbolic thing, like for example the Sun or a Great Spirit Beast or something like that. The Janissaries would be the perfect garrisoning force for such a world, because they would be seen as others, as different, and they probably would also lose a lot of their humanity by hiding behind their crying death masks. They would be a very cold and distant force of imperial authority and due to their utter and complete religious conviction, they would have absolutely no goddamn problems whatsoever ever in punishing the heretics, should they prove to be a little bit unruly. Granted, there's always the danger that they might take their purity just a tiny bit too far, but hey, that's what commissars and entrenched preachers are for. And that, ladies and gentlemen, has been my lore video on the Maccabian Janissaries, the first of the individual Imperial Guard Regiment videos. I will be trying to get over most of them eventually. Some of them will be getting specialised videos, like the Death Corps of Krieg, for example, will be featured in a much larger scope series, once I finally get around to starting work on the Siege of Rax lore videos and the Armageddon Steel Legion, well, they might be coming sooner rather than later. Until then, I have been Arch, thank you very much for watching, and I do hope to see you all again soon. Have a good day.